Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Aki Basho 2022 coming up, and that means we have some fantasy stuff to talk about. Now, if you're looking at this screen, you'll notice that we're not doing the brackets this time like we usually do. This is because in my travels across the Fantasy Sumo universe, I have found more and more games that work in more and more different ways. More and more I have found that they don't use brackets necessarily, and it's just about picking winners and losers. Now, the ranks of the wrestlers still matter with respect to their opposition, their probable strength of schedule, but it doesn't really matter in a lot of cases that a guy is between Magashira 1 and 4, or 1 and 5, or 6 and 10, or whatever. So these are the brackets, so to speak, that we're dealing with here. One, the best. That's the guys who should absolutely win as much as possible. These are the good picks, the angel, the holy picks. Um, these are going to be the guys who are good, but not quite as good, like maybe good for their bracket in the bracket games. Um, good, but slightly riskier picks. Then you've got the, uh, let me switch to yellow. We're going to go with yellow for the meh picks. These are the ones that are totally reasonable that they could, if they have a good tournament, actually pop off and be excellent choices, but there are definite uh, downsides to some of them. In a lot of cases, the downsides are bracket related, but there's also a, a lot of just who knows how they're gonna do. Like these are nine and six to six and nine kind of guys in a lot of cases. For the next group, we're talking now, if you're a League of Legends fan and you are familiar with LS, you might see what I'm doing with the, the Holy and the Sinner picks. Um, the Sinner picks, the Devil one over here, these are the guys that, even though they could do well, when you see how many guys are on this list here, some of them are going to get Kachi Koshis. But on average, these guys should have a better chance of getting a losing record than a winning record. That's why they're here. And then these are the troll packs. These are the ones that you are absolutely out of your mind if you're picking these guys in anything other than stuff like the sumo game on very specific days when they have very specific matchups. For games that require you to pick someone who will do well for the entire tournament, don't pick these guys. Okay, let's get into it. So we start with the best. We've got the GOAT, Serena Williams, representing this group. Obviously, we have Tirano Fuji. He's the Yokozuna. As long as the Yokozuna can stay healthy, you pretty much always call the Yokozuna, at, put the Yokozuna at the top of this list. Can Tirano Fuji stay healthy? So far, so good. Since Hakuho retired, we've actually been in an unusually uh, consistent state for the Sanyaku, like guys just don't really drop out as often as I think we were used to seeing when Hakuho would fight a couple times and then drop out or not even show up for a tournament, stuff like that. So Terano Fuji, hopefully, you know, he's been good, his health has been good, so hopefully he'll stick around. Kotono Waka, you know, we saw last time he was 7-3 and three and then the COVID's got him, but like what are you going to do, right? He kind of got screwed that he was stuck at Ma uh, Magashira 2 East instead of going up to 1. Eh, whatever, it's not going to matter. His competition has actually gone down a little bit now that he's he gets to fight Tobizaro and Midori Fuji. He, he should do fine. Takiyasu, the last time he was rested due to COVID, he went 12 and 1. And then he lost his last two and choked away a Yusho, but still. Now at that point he was Magashira 7. You might look at him being Magashira 4 West and say, yeah, but his competition is going to be harder. Ah, but not so much. If you have watched old videos where I uh, brought up the, the joy, J-O-I, or if you just know that term generally, this is generally considered to be the top 16 wrestlers in the Makauchi division. So the Yokozuna is supposed to fight the best guys. That is considered the top 15 after him in the rankings. Well, with the extra guys that went into the Sanyaku, we now have 10 instead of eight like there were in Nagoya, which means if you're looking at the top 16, that only stretches down to Maegashira 3 West. So while Takayasu would have been in that group in Nagoya, he's not in that group now. 
relative to the rest of the division, even though he's at the same numerical rank, he's actually gone down two spots. He's two wrestlers further down the list. That means his schedule is going to be considerably easier. Now, this may not hold if there are injuries. Two injuries to people above him are going to mean he fights the Yokozuna anyway, if it happens in the first, eh, like eight, nine days of the Basho, and that's absolutely possible. But like I said, health has been pretty good across the board, so that's by no means a given. He has a really good chance of having quite an easy schedule, one not much harder than the one he had when he went 12 and 3 at Magashira 7. So this is a very, very good pick. Ona Show, Magashira 7. Now, he should do really well. He doesn't have a bad record against anyone from 5 to 10. There are no bad matchups for him, which means he's probably going to get his Kachi Koshi. Well, I'm sure he's going to get his Kachi Koshi. I would be shocked if he didn't. But he's got an excellent chance at 9 wins, 10 wins. He is a very safe pick. And I had to pick somebody who's outside the top five, right? He's the best choice. If you're thinking Takano Sho, let me get to him in a second. Takakesho, I put at the bottom, obviously I'm going in rank order here, but Takakesho, he's a little bit of a question mark always because of his injury history. I realize he's been a few tournaments since he had to sit out because of an injury, but you still have to think, is he going to break down this time? Do I trust him to stay in one piece? I think until he goes a full year or so without dropping out of a tournament, this is always going to hang over him a little bit. So if you trust him to stay healthy, he's an excellent pick. If you don't, maybe you bump him down to merely being a good pick. Okay, let's talk about the next group. Endo I had in the first group as well, but with an asterisk. He did so poorly last tournament that I wonder if injury is involved. And if you think it might be, that could affect a lot of things. But he's in a similar position to Ona Show, where he doesn't have a bad record really against almost anyone around him. He is also at a rank. So Magashira 6 West, nobody at Magashira 6 West has had a losing record in over a year. And that's because at that rank, the matchups all tend to be below that rank. You'll fight the fives and maybe a Maegashira four, but other than that, until you get towards the end of the tournament and matchups are done based on record, everything is really down the ladder. You fight guys at ranks below you. Now, that doesn't work to Endo's benefit this time as much as it might in other cases, because who's below him? Onisho, Hokuto Fuji, who... He's been struggling a little bit, but he's always dangerous. Um, Tochi Notion has obviously been doing pretty well lately. Aoyama, I don't really trust him to keep up whatever got him to Magashira 6 in the first place. Um, but he's still decent. The level of competition at these mid-ranks is a little stiffer than it has been for a few tournaments. But he's still better than most of these guys, and I think he is a safe pick if you don't like Onisho for some reason. Takano Show. now I did not put him here, although I was tempted to, with an asterisk. I think the fact that he dropped out of the last tournament due to an injury is reason enough to keep him here. Um, you have to assume he's not 100%, but he's also at Maegashira 10, where a guy of his skills should smash. He should absolutely blast dudes, even at 80%. He should easily have a winning record. He's a very safe pick, especially in a bracket game. Um, if you want to stay away from him in the daily games until you see how he's doing, that's fair enough. But for now, if you've got to pick a guy for the whole tournament, especially lower down, he should be pretty safe. Okuno Umi, when he gets down into those double digit ranks, he always gets winning records. The last couple times uh, he was double digit, he was nine and six. I don't see any reason why he can't do the same thing. The competition level is something he should be able to handle. Uh, I'm not going to assume he's going to break down until I see it happen. And Ryudin, he stalled out. So when he got suspended for his COVID violations, he was mid-Maigashira. So at 12, he's in a pretty good position. This should be 
the last tournament where he's a pretty safe bet to do well next one if he if he has his you know nine and six ten and five he'll go up far enough that that is kind of his eh, i don't want to say ceiling because there's so much parity in sumo right now that a guy who used to get stuck at you know my share five my share six could pop off and end up jumping even further for a tournament but it's where you can expect him to uh, start having more normal records start having some Maki Koshis again, stuff like that. All right, let's get to the larger group. Um, I've been talking a lot because I like to talk about the guys who do well. These guys, mm, we can probably speed through these. Shodai, why don't I have him in good? Because he always starts slowly. And if you want to pick him, you have to trust that either he's turned it around and he's figured out how not to start slowly, or you somehow trust that it's only going to last for five days instead of seven. Because if it goes two extra days, that goes from him having a great record and being a, a cornerstone of your fantasy team to barely having a winning record and just failing all over the again. All over the again? All over again. Um, also remember, now that he has a winning record, he has a tendency to then kind of be like, whatever, I can have a losing record. I'm not saying he consciously thinks this. But let's see him pull a few winning records together in a row before we start really trusting him. Every Sekiwaki and Komusubi. Do you look at any of these guys and think one of them is really a favorite to do much better than the rest? Because I don't. Ichi no Joe, obviously, he just had a great tournament. Oh, he's on a roll. He was Maegashira 2, so he fought all of the same guys, so he should be able to do well again. Yeah, he should be able to do well again. That doesn't mean he will. That's the same for all of these guys. Wakataka Kage should be able to win 12, win, uh, win 12 fights every time. He doesn't. Any of these guys could go 12 and 3. Any of these guys could go 8 and 7. Any of these guys could go 7 and 8 or 6 and 9. There's no way to tell. They're all going to beat the crap out of each other. They're just all, they all exist on the same plane and there's really no way to know who's going to do better than anyone else may say i had him over here but then you have to take into consideration especially if you're doing a bracket game kotonawaka and takiyasu are your one two and by the way i think kotonawaka is slightly ahead of takiyasu because he is the better wrestler and because even though like i said the health of guys has been good it is very realistic for Takiyasu to end up fighting a lot of Sanyaku guys because there's a couple injuries. So I do think Kotonawaka is a slightly better choice. But Meisei at 2 West, he's just not in an enviable position. Uh, he's got to fight the Sanyaku. I think he'll do okay. I think he's very capable. He's proven that he's capable of having a winning record, 8-7, and 9-6, something like that. But it's not a given. Tamawashi... I mean, he's the ageless wonder, but we know that anywhere from 6 and 9 to 9 and 6 is completely within his wheelhouse. Wakamoto Haru has kind of the Endo and uh, and Onisho thing going on. Being at Magashira 6, he can absolutely go back to his 9 and 6 record, but now that those mid ranks are a little looking a little bit tougher, he may not. Nishiki Fuji at 10. He's in a range where the competition should favor him a little bit still, based on what we saw last time, but he's so young and he's so new to the division that's hard to say. Kota Shoho, I'm just question marks all over the place with this guy. I don't know what to expect. Maybe Maegashira 11 is just where he sits forever and ever. Maybe that's just his level. Ichi Yamamoto, now if you saw his 6-2 and two and you saw his start from the tournament before and you're like, no, he's on a roll, he should be able to do really well. Remember, when he starts hot, he gets tougher competition and he falls to pieces. So if he doesn't start hot, then, you know, okay, he starts okay, he's 5-4. and four. Well, maybe he gets to 8-7, and seven, possibly 9-6. and six. Well, if he starts 6-2, and 7-2 and, and things get tougher, what's he going to end up with? eight and seven nine and six and there's no guarantee that happens so his upside is not as high as his start from last tournament makes it seem oh ho by the way the question marks for kota shoho same for oh ho who the hell knows what's going to happen with this guy no idea 
Remember what I said in another video if you saw it. I am giving up doing daily picks because of Oho. For him to lose to Diamami on one foot, no, I don't know anymore. I'm not even going to pretend that I know who the hell is going to win these fights. Teretsu Yoshi, near the bottom of the division, should do decently. I don't think he's going to do poorly enough to drop to Jurio, which means he's probably going to go at least 7 and 8. But when you've got Ryudin and Takano Showdown there, depending on you know if you're playing a bracket game, it's really tough to see him as being a best option in many cases. There are just, no matter what game you're playing, there are going to be better guys to pick than Teretsuyoshi. And then Mitake Yumi, he's sort of like Takano Sho. So Takano Sho is definitely set up to be in the best slot, except his injury. Mitake Yumi is definitely a good choice normally, except his injury. We don't know how he is. He's a risky choice until we get a better sense of how his shoulder is. And now we've got to start the unfortunate group of of the losing guys with Aura. My boy, I am so sad. I am so sad I have to do this to you, Aura. But you're my Gashira 3 West. You're at the bottom of the joy, but you are in the joy. You're not going to have a winning record. I would be stunned if you had a winning record. I want you to go like 10 and 5. I want you to compete for you show so much, but it's just not going to happen. And then everybody else is pretty much the same. Takara Fuji, he's back up at a level where he's probably going to get smashed. Sadano Umi, he was just 7 and 8. I was a little surprised he even did that well. Part of it was because of his matchups due to the, all the COVID dropouts. I mean, I don't think he's going to do better than this. Aoyama definitely hit his current ceiling last time. If he does better than 6-9, and nine, I will be a little surprised. Tochi Notion could have a winning record. Um, Hokuto Fuji could have a winning record. Do you really trust either of them to do it? They're probably both going to be 7-8 and eight or about that. Mio Giryu, uh, once he gets back into the single digits... He used to do fine at low single digits, and now it seems to be more of a struggle for him. So even though he had his 9 and 6 at, I think it was 14 last time, you know, 8 and 7 is probably a good tournament for him, and that's not good enough. Uh, Kotoweko, he was 5 and 5 when he got COVID last time. I, I kept saying it looked like he was lucking his way to even that record. Um... He's capable, he can still stay in Maegashira, I don't think he's just, you know, doomed to fall out of this division once everybody starts figuring him out or anything like that. Uh, but I think he's 8 and 7, 7 and 8 all the time and you can do better. Chiyo Tairyu went from 6 and 3 to 6 and 9. Sorry Hiko, uh, don't worry, somebody I know. Uh, yeah, the Chiyos are both down, down, down. Chiyo Shoma should be better than he's showing at the ranks he's at. He was never this bad at these ranks, and now all of a sudden he can't seem to buy a winning record even at double-digit Magashira ranks. I, I think he might be getting towards the end unless we see some kind of serious turnaround. Now, maybe down where he is now is where he finds the competition that he can actually beat. Who knows? But if a guy starts to fade, don't trust him. Yutakiyama... He's eight. Wow, that's a terrible. Wow, scribble that out. Eight and seven is pretty much his ceiling everywhere. Hiro to Umi, he came up from Jurio eight. I mean, sometimes the new guys will show up and do something special, but he came up from Jurio eight. What are you really expecting from this guy? And now we're on to the troll picks. This one's really simple. Tobizaro Midori, Fuji, Nishikigi, they're all fucked. They're all doomed. Toby Zaro and Dori Fuji are going to get absolutely steamrolled. If they get out of the first week with two wins, they should be content with that. If either of them goes three and four in the first week, they should be doing backflips. This is going to be five wins max for both of them. If either can beat that, I will applaud them because well done, sirs. Nishikigi might end up in the same boat. At four east, he actually got a little lucky. The way it's set up, again, the joy ends at 3 west. If no one gets hurt, he avoids that. And his road is much easier. That doesn't make it easy. If he starts fighting guys below him, 
you're still looking at Endo, Onisha, Wakamoto Haru. These are guys who should be able to smack the hell out of him. But it's a lot better than having to fight Ichino Joe and Kirabayama and all of them. Sir Gisho doesn't stay in Makauchi for very long. He probably got his spot in the division saved by catching COVID last time. I don't suspect he's going to get lucky enough to stick around again, but the level of competition around him is low enough that it could happen. Um, but I wouldn't sus- expect anything more than eight and seven maximum, absolute maximum, probably a losing record. And then Mitoru, I mean, this guy was in Jurio for what, five years, four years, and miracled his way from Jurio four and nine and six into the bottom of the division. He's not sticking around. I would be amazed. Again, you can always think that eight and seven is possible for guys in his position and that they'll they'll be able to stick around that way but uh, like a 10 and 5 something that makes him worth picking in any of these games no not gonna happen troll 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 all right that's gonna do it for our fantasy preview for the Aki Basho 2022 I hope you've enjoyed it have a great time with your fantasy games and I will see you next time